In 1924, the dry region of Ashcroft, which was known for its production of high-quality potatoes, was introduced to a new crop, tomatoes. Chinese growers who had planted a few acres as an experiment were pleased with the results and eager to contract a large acreage. The growers, along with a group of businessmen and ranchers, approached BX manager Willis West about financing the building of a cannery to process locally grown crops. The BX company, which had the freighting business in Ashcroft for 40 years, but had gone out of business in 1920, consented to finance the operation under the agreement that they would have management of it. The formation of the Ashcroft Cam Cannery Company provided hope to the small community and outlying area whose economy was in a decline. The BX Company converted their empty freight barn into a factory, the Chinese leased as much land that was available from the ranchers on a crop share basis, and production began in 1925. The morning the growers delivered their first pickings and the inside workers were assigned to their duties, they were among all employed, three persons who had ever seen a cannery in operation. These three were the superintendent, the closing machine operator, and the engineer in charge of a steam plant. The rest were largely townspeople who had to learn the tasks assigned to them. Great credit was due to the housewives and young women who were given the task of 14 quart pan of peeled tomatoes. Some of these women became experts and earned as high as five dollars a day. The average daily earnings were about 350 a day. The factory operated 10 hours a day from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., six, day, six days a week, with an hour for lunch. In order to take care of fast ripening tomatoes, the factory often quite, quite often ran on Sundays as well. The total pack for the first season exceeded 29,000 cases. This production grew greater each year, and by 1927, the canning company had manufactured 40,000 cases of 20-ounce cans. Behind Wing Chong Tai's store was a large garden space. Each February, frame beds were put up. There were three or four rows, about four to five feet wide and 60 feet long. They were covered with glass frames, and at night, each row was covered with long burlap coverings to keep them warm. A small number of these bedding plants were sold to people in the town and district, but the main part were to supply the leased farms, with some going to other farms around Ashcroft. The tomato crop in Ashcroft was harvested each year from the later part of July until the middle of August, when the semi-ripes were packed in crates and shipped by rail and trucks down to Vancouver for the fresh markets. By mid-August, the tomatoes were ripened on the vine, and that's when the cannery started to operate. The tomato fields were filled with local pickers. The Chinese contractors employed many of the indigenous community, and they would arrive with their families and camp in tents for the picking season as well as Chinese laborers from the Lower Mainland. A visit to the cannery when it was in full operation gave one an idea of the magnitude of the undertaking. There were rows of uniformed girls peeling tomatoes and local men stationed here and there in charge of the various units of machinery. There was a hiss of steam, the hum of machinery, belts driving the machine. The huge smokestacks poured out coal smoke that made the steam to pro process the best tasting tomato ever produced. Building the Ashcroft Cannery was a splendid success, and one of the stakeholders sold his interest to Canadian Cannery, Canneries Limited of Hamilton, Ontario. This company, a leader in the fruit and vegetable industry in Canada, recognized the quality of the Ashcroft tomatoes, and in the spring of 1928 extended the factory with the capacity of producing 3,000 cases a day. It was the most modern and second largest tomato factory in Canada. The Ashcroft Cannery sign was replaced with Elmer's and the Ashcroft Canneries became part of the Canadian Western Canners Limited. The cannery not only manufactured canned tomatoes, every second year they canned pumpkins, they also produced tomato juice and catsup, and apparently during catsup making time, the smell of tomatoes permeated every nook and cranny of the town. During the war years, the price of land went up and acreage under tomatoes decreased to about 800 acres. By 1957, the competition from American tomato products made the Ashcroft operation an unprofitable one. After a great deal of study, a decision was made to shut down the Ashcroft plant as well as others in the area. In 1961, the cannery was demolished to make room for the Sand and Sage Hotel.